And I found this post that somebody shared on Instagram stories that, that was there at the New York, the New Year's Day, sorry, Berghain event. And again, I'm not too sure if this is legit. I've kind of blanked the person's name out because again, I don't want to be spreading people's business, but it was on a public available social media platform where everybody can see it and stuff. So I don't think I'm in, you know, intruding on anybody's privacy here. But this person shared on their Instagram flipping stories. After an 11 hour re-entry queue, round two and birthday celebrations can commence. This patron left Berghain, went to Berghain for the Club Sylvester, right? Um, the new, the New Year's Day celebration. Managed to get in, luckily so, because again, you know, it doesn't, there's no guarantee at big events you'll get in. It's not more easier or less hard, whatever, right? It's just the same as any other event. Maybe it's even worse when the rejections about because of so many tourists come through. Who knows? You get in. And then they left and came back again. And to get back in, they had to queue 11 hours. One, one, 10 plus one hours outside. And from what I saw and from what I've experienced, <laughs> it wasn't warm outside. It was bitterly, bitterly cold. Everyone was had, everyone had some sort of parka or a coat on or a down jacket. People were wearing hoods. I saw people were wearing balaclavas, snoods. It was legitimately cold. So it wasn't even like one of those events where you're like, oh, it doesn't matter. I can just hang outside. And you kind of, you know, you do a bit of cope by saying you're getting yourself a tan or you're stretching your legs. No, no, no. You are freezing your natters off standing outside it. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, is there anywhere in the world, especially if you listen to it, it doesn't have to be a nightclub. It could be anything. Is there anything that you would be happy to wait for 11 hours for? like anything i can't think of one thing maybe outside of an emergency passport renewal like imagine again god forbid touch wood but imagine you're going on like a long-haul flight to like somewhere in southeast asia you're going somewhere in north america central america south america parts of africa and for some reason like an absolute donor you end up losing your passport and there's a i don't think it exists nowadays i think you still have to if I'm not mistaken, send something off. But imagine if there's a service that exists that allows you to go somewhere and get a passport possibly on the same day. But you have to pay like an exorbitant amount in terms of, you know, getting it. Like maybe 500 pounds when usually it's 120, whatever it is. And you get told that the minimum waiting time is five hours. If my holiday was dependent on me getting that passport or, you know, whatever it may be, and there was such opportunity for me to get a flight the next day, I'm staying as long as possible because essentially that's still my holiday anyway. What am I going to do going home? Let's just try a thing and see if it works out. That's the only thing I can legitimately think that I would wait more than five hours for. And this obviously comes from a person like myself who was at the early, earlier Club Sylvester that happened in June, July, I think. That was to make up for the one that didn't happen in you know, January of this year because of the pandemic and whatnot. And I waited a total, a max total of four hours. And I honestly think if I wasn't talking to people in the queue and I didn't kind of have a little crew with me that was kind of, you know, a bit sharing some banter, sharing some drinks and war stories and whatnot, I didn't have to call out the other person that was trying to lighten cut. If I wasn't kind of having a sort of good time in a queue, I think I would have left earlier than that. I didn't actually notice it was four hours until I got in there. I was like, oh, wow, I've been outside for four hours. That's when I kind of noticed I was kind of looking at my phone. But I can't imagine. I legitimately can't imagine. Given how much I love Berghain, given how often I speak about it here on this podcast and stuff, and you have to unfortunately put up with me talking about it ad nauseum, I can't even imagine myself having the patience to wait outside for 11 hours. Like, I really can't. So I kind of have to commend people that do this, but also have to question people's life choices for the first, for in, like, not even just committing to that amount of time and giving away to a nightclub. I mean, just more so in the sense of, why would you go to one of the most popular events in the calendar and then leave and try and come back? Like, why? Just go and ride it out. It's a similar to like running your first I don't know, running your first 5K, there is a knowledge out there that says, no, no, not 5K, maybe a 10K is a good example. There's knowledge out there that says, if you run your first 5K, you should just try and run as fast as you can in the beginning and then hold on towards the end. There's a lot of kind of advice in terms of how you should kind of pace yourself and whatnot. And sometimes when you go clubbing, especially when you go to places like this that kind of open, you know, consecutive days, it's probably best just to kind of go in and just smash it out, especially if it's a popular event and see how long you last, unless you're going to see someone specific. But even then, I would still say that because it's not like Berkheim, it's just one dance floor. There's various places where you can go and kind of quote unquote chill and wind down and relax in between sets before you actually see the person you want to see. So it's not even that deep. 
So I can't ever imagine that part. Just imagine leaving, coming back after a nap and having to queue for 11 hours. I can understand that it happens though, because imagine you're outside for two hours already. Your brain will make it tell you, you're here for two, you might as well wait another one. And then when it comes to three, you're like, oh, you might as well wait four. And then suddenly, you know, it's over five. There's no point in leaving now because you already committed five hours. You know what I mean? You might as well play those kind of weird tricks on you. But yeah, um, God bless them for getting in anyway. Well done. Congratulations. But damn, son. Damn.